morning we are waking up and uh, like I told you at the beginning of this trip we had a specific destination in mind and this is going to be kind of one of those days where I am going to stop later we're going to stop and, and check out a few places but we're going to kind of it's going to be all on the road pretty much we're going to hightail it from here in Nashville all the way to our destination we'll be on the road most all day it's going to be interesting that's for sure Amy and I have uh, already gotten up and packed up the car. So we, it's pretty early in the morning. We knew that this day today was going to be mainly a driving day. And if I wanted to make a few stops throughout the day, we were going to have to leave here pretty early. So we're, we're, we're getting on the road. Yeah. I forgot to mention in the intro, and I guess it's because we were in a hurry to get out of the hotel, but uh, this video today, this is not a true crime story or anything like that. For the most part today, this is just like a travel vlog. We're on the road, driving all day. We are headed out of Nashville, and well, right over here on our right, this is Nissan Stadium, home of the Tennessee Titans. We've got over 500 miles to go today. It's gonna be a lot of fun. stop at the National Corvette Museum here. We're actually going to be passing it by right now because of the time constraints today and how far that we have to go. If we have time on the way back, we will stop. And if not, we'll just plan a special trip to come back and see it. But for now, we've got 451 miles to go today. big boys anywhere near us so we're gonna eat at a big boy for the first time ever that city in the distance there that is Cincinnati Ohio and we've actually gotten into a bunch of traffic now it's been pretty easy up until this point we're making pretty good time oh. Bengals Stadium over here on our right, and that's the second NFL stadium we've seen today. Now we're still about 125 miles away from our destination. But we've stopped here in a small town called Wapa Canetta, Ohio. There it is. That's how you pronounce the name of the town. Wapa Canetta, Ohio. I wanted to stop here the entire time. I had this on my plans because I wanted to see this place. Wapa Canetta was the birthplace of Apollo 11 astronaut and the first man to walk on the moon, Neil Armstrong. He was born and raised right here. And his family has built a museum here in his honor with a lot of his artifacts and stuff like that. It's the Neil Armstrong Air and Space Museum. 
I, I definitely wanted to see this. I read that Neil Armstrong's family built this museum to look like this with that dome structure. It's supposed to resemble a like moon base if they were to build a, a space station or a, a space base on the moon. That's what it's supposed to look like. It's definitely very intriguing nonetheless. It looks like out here in front of it is a uh, bronze of Neil Armstrong when he was younger playing with an airplane, a little model airplane. There he is right there. Neil Armstrong, first man to walk on the moon. Says this museum was named to honor Neil Armstrong and includes items that he and his parents donated. Cool. Ohio's astronauts. They have the walls lined with like a timeline of the events of space history. So Neil Armstrong was in the Navy as a pilot and this was his Navy jacket. His senior yearbook photo. That's cool. place is so cool and it's all underground we're we're underground under that giant dome and the dirt everywhere oh wow look this is neil armstrong's gemini 8 space suit he wore this actual suit when he flew up in gemini 8 Man, this is a piece of history. This is so cool to see. And it, it just looks like a like a bomber jacket almost. Like it's not real. It doesn't appear to be that thick of material like new spacesuits. That is so cool. I can't believe that they have this here. With this helmet and gloves and everything. There's a picture of him wearing the suit. And sitting right over here next to it, this is Neil Armstrong's Gemini 8 spacecraft. This, he actually flew to space inside of this capsule. How freaking cool is this? seat belts, all the controls and everything. The bottom of it looks different. The heat shield is no longer there. It all looks to be original. I never expected to see this here. I, in fact, I've never looked up to see where it was, but it's really cool to see. Look, you see the retro rocket ports and everything up there on the top. Wow. So uh, this is Neil Armstrong's airplane. And it says that Neil Armstrong knew how to fly before he learned how to drive that uh, when his senior prom came around, he had to walk to it because he didn't know how to drive, but he was already flying this plane by then. It's kind of interesting that they've got it in here. I wonder how they got this thing into the building. Here's a video playing here of Neil Armstrong flying this exact plane. Oh, cool. Some old newspaper articles from when he landed on the moon. 1969. There's the Chicago Tribune. 
Giant Leap for Mankind, July 21st, 1969. Hey, look, they have a model of the Sputnik satellite just hanging up on the roof up here above all this other cool stuff. That model there of the Saturn V would look good in my collection. I have probably 20 Saturn V rockets. I don't have one quite this big though. As you can see, I have a wide variety of Saturn V models that would fit in perfectly. Oh, here's some more food items. Coffee and tuna salad and chocolate pudding, chicken and rice, cream of tomato, applesauce and something that says food sticks. I'm not sure what that is. That's kind of interesting. There's a spacesuit there on display. I guess you can take a picture with it. Oh man, I just saw the Holy Grail down this tunnel. Oh my goodness. This was Neil Armstrong's backup suit. So they had two suits prepared for both Neil and Buzz. They wore one and then they had a backup in case the original had some kind of issue. And this was his backup suit. Neil Armstrong quite possibly could have very easily worn this suit into space. How cool is that? Hey, they have a uh, moon rock brought back from the Sea of Tranquility by Neil and Buzz Aldrin on Apollo 11. This is one of the rocks that they brought home with them from the moon back in 1969. This is some of the items they had to carry there with them to collect the moon samples, the moon rocks and stuff, the shovel and bags. And then here's some of the cameras that they used to film those iconic shots of the earth from the moon. While they're walking around and, and Neil's filming Buzz Aldrin walking towards him. Here's all of the Apollo landing sites on the moon. You see 12, 14, 15, 16, 17. Apollo 13 was supposed to land where 14 landed. Oh, this is cool. This is some of the sleeping bags that the Apollo astronauts used when they went to sleep on their way to the moon. They would pull these out and sleep in them. And they even have some of their like hygiene stuff like they peed and number two in this stuff. I have to say that that metal funnel that kind of resembles a penis there is kind of interesting it's kind of weird to see and then they would just go number two in one of these bags to defecate an astronaut attached a special bag with an adhesive coating to his buttocks the astronaut then guided the waste into the bag with his fingers he placed a capsule of germicide into the bag sealed it and then the bag was stored. Wow, I can only imagine how humiliating that must have been for those astronauts. Oh, here's some more food items. There's a Pepsi can back there. I didn't realize they could take Pepsi into space with them, but there's, it shows pictures of Coke cans and everything. And then there are ice cream bars. It says this flag went into space with Neil Armstrong on Apollo 11. And then he brought it back to Earth with him. There's some kind of placard over here in the grass. In tribute to those who sacrificed their lives in the pursuit of space exploration. Wow, that's cool. Here's... The three astronauts that caught on fire on Apollo 1, Bert, uh, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chafee. 
There's the astronauts on board the Challenger in 86. That's the teacher, Krista McCuffey. And then the Columbia that blew up in 03 coming back from space. Shunka gunka gunka. It's an Apollo command module. Now, it's not a real one. This is just a mock up. But it's an Apollo command module. Oh, it's got the seats in there and everything. Yeah, you can't see it from this angle, but all the controls are up there on the C1. The control panels up there and everything. Wow, I wonder, I guess it, it looks like at one time you could enter into it right here and go in there and see what the inside of it looked like, but they've since sealed it up. They even got, this is you know how it would shoot burst of air while it was in space to, to maneuver. Here's another panel they've covered. It's sitting right next to this Apollo capsule is a Gemini capsule. Obviously another mock-up. This one's open. We can get up in there and see. There's a, uh, that famous image where Buzz Aldrin went to space and, and he, the uh, Gemini capsule and he had to do the spacewalk and come back to the back and take something off. And it was when they were learning how to do spacewalks. Uh, and they got the seats in here. This is each one of the astronauts had like this one little mirror in front of their face that they could see out of. And then like all this room right here like how I have leg room down here, they didn't, there was, you know, control panels and buttons for them to push and fire. Um, but they did actually have the window for them to see out. And there was another one that this was actually the real, where the hatch really was. And uh, there was another window there for this, whoever, you know, was riding shotgun with you. So Mercury was one astronaut, Gemini was two, and then they developed Apollo, which held three. I would venture to say that this probably was one of Neil's planes because it's got NASA marked all over it. NASA 213. It says it's an F-5D Skylancer. NASA test pilot Neil Armstrong used the F-5D Skylancer to create an emergency abort launch and landing procedure for NASA's dinosaur program in the early 1960s. Sweet. That's awesome. This, this, this was Neil Armstrong's plane. This is, and this is not a mock-up. This was his actual plane. awesome it's all here this this is the uh, landing gear the hydraulics that moved it up and down and the hydraulics that moved the doors up and down when it's in flight and you the the hooks even still here right here the uh, pilot could drop the hook and catch you know the cable on like an aircraft carrier or even on ground they have removed the engine though but that's awesome i mean that's like a solid steel i always wondered what those were made out of because it has to be strong enough so when the plane catches it it, it grabs the cord and it, it doesn't tear the plane apart it stops the plane so I, I knew it had to be something thick but i wondered what was strong enough to do that sweet 
also here in Wapakoneta. It's not connected to the museum or anything, but you can go by and see Neil Armstrong's childhood home. It is not open to the public. It's a private residence and someone actually lives here, but there's a placard out front showing you that this was his home. And you can see where he lived at. He lived in that top floor up there in the uh, room on the left hand side where that window is on the left. That was Neil Armstrong's room when he was a young boy, when he was learning how to fly. <music> And finally, nine and a half, almost 10 hours later, and 500 miles, we finally made it Lake Erie. So I know it's going to be a little hard to see me. It has gotten late on me. The sun's gone down. It was a really long day today, and man, I am exhausted. I don't know what it is about driving long distances like that because you're just sitting. You're, I've, I've, I've sat behind the wheel all day long, but it completely wears me out going long distances like that driving. I, I don't know what it is. I, I'm, I'm pooped. I'm exhausted. So I'm going to wrap this video up today on top of being exhausted from the drive today. We're getting up early in the morning because we did come here for a specific reason. That which I will show you tomorrow. Uh, we get up tomorrow and and get right back at it. So I'm going into our hotel room, and I am gonna pass out and hit the bed and try to get some rest. Thank you all so much for watching. I really really appreciate it. If you're new here, go down and hit that subscribe button. Then hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you want to help support the channel, there's links down in the description box below that you can check out. Thank you all so much. I will see you again tomorrow from here in the northern point of Ohio, Lake Erie. Thank you all. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Much love to you all.